Hi guys and many thanks for joining me. If you are new here, hi, I'm Kat and I like to talk about crimes, investigations, missing people, conspiracy theories and everything related. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and also make sure you hit the notification bell so you are the first one to know about any new videos I upload. For my returning subscribers and viewers, I would like to thank you all so so much for all the continuous support and all those lovely comments I keep reading from you. Thank you. Okay, today I want to talk to you about uh, the Mallorca holiday in 2005. I know that Madeline disappeared on 3rd of May 2007, but I think it's important that we get to talk about this holiday because it can actually put in context the behavior of some of the members of the Tapas 9 group. And let's get started. But before we do it, here is the disclaimer. I do not mean to be disrespectful to anyone I talk about in this video. The video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. The information I collect is from the internet. I compile all this information together and make a video. And from this video, you guys are more than welcome to draw your own conclusions. Thank you. Madeline, two and a half years old at the time, and the twins, only a few months old, go on holiday in Mallorca with their parents. And three more couples are with them on the same holiday. We have David and Fiona Payne with their daughter, Fiona pregnant at the time with the second child. And then we have Stuart and Tara with their two children and Savio and Caterina Gaspar with one child and pregnant with the second. Savio Gaspar actually knows Kate from the same university they studied at in Dundee between 1987 and 1992. Katerina only met Jerry McCann at his wedding to Kate in 1998, but they become good friends and see each other quite often, spend weekends together and uh, usually call each other and have conversations over the phone. And actually, they have quite an intimate friendship, as Katerina says in her statement. Okay, now this is getting, here is getting a bit disturbing. On the third or fourth evening of the holiday in Mallorca, at dinner time, they are all set on the patio. They are all having drinks and chatting. And that's when Katerina hears something which she never believed she would. She is sat between Jerry McCann and David Payne at the table. Katerina hears Payne asking, presumably, about Madeline, if she did that. And then he puts a finger in his mouth and sucks it while putting it in and out. And with the other hand, he is tracing small circles around his nipple in a very provocative way. Katerina at this point is certain that these gestures have sexual connotations. And while she is very surprised of what she heard, an awkward silence settles around the table. However, just like that, they all begin chatting again. I think that everyone at that table overheard what Jerry and David were chatting about. Otherwise, how can you explain the sudden silence? I mean, people, they don't just stop their fun chats all of a sudden unless something distracts them. And I believe that the conversation between Jerry and David was the distracting factor to all the members sitting at the table. But then, how quick they turn back to their chats, as if what they heard is something normal or, I don't know, something they would usually hear. I mean, how crazy is that? Or or perhaps they decided to just you know ignore the comments and just carry on having fun chatting eating drinking whatever god knows what was in their brains really oh god knows it's safe to say that katerina doesn't trust pain anymore around the kids and at this point she realizes she fears the safety of her own daughter and the other children and then it happens again. Payne's talking about an imaginary situation and Katerina believes he was actually talking about his own daughter. You'd think by this point that he already learned his lesson, right? But, but I'm asking, do they ever do? Do they ever learn their lessons? 
Katerina believes that David Payne is looking at little girls differently and that he was looking at child pornography on the internet. During this holiday, the fathers are bathing the children, but Katerina, after having witnessed what she did, she doesn't allow her daughter to be near Payne. Katerina also warns her husband to be careful around bath times, especially if, Dave, if David would bathe the children. After hearing the same thing from David, not only once, but twice, she was quite sure of David's thoughts toward girls. During the same stay in Majorca, David, Fiona and their daughter took Madeline to spend the day with them so that Kate and Jerry can have some rest and spend time with the twins. I mean, okay, so let me get this straight. Madeline spent the day with David and Fiona so that the McCann's can spend time with the twins? I mean, wasn't Madeline part of the same family? Wasn't Madeline their child as well? Why did she need to be somewhere else anyway? Was she, was she really an inconvenience that she couldn't, you know, stay with her siblings and her parents? I mean, seriously, what's up with that? I, co I, co I could never do that. Like, like, t like you know, pushing my, my older kid to a side to spend the day with someone else so that I can spend the day with my smaller child, with her brother, it doesn't make any sense, does it? But not only did they leave the kids alone in Praia da Luz whilst they were out drinking and stuffing their faces, but they've done it before that. And even before Mallorca in Greece. And they think that this is what the family holiday is. I mean, oh my God, these, these are some really, really selfish people in my opinion. And I'll tell you what, even in Greece, there are allegations of the same behavior from David Payne. So, you know, I need to ask, I have to ask this. Why did they carry on going on holidays together when they knew very well David's interesting girls? I mean, what was so important about Payne being on all those holidays that they ignored the obvious? It's right there. It's in front of you. Why don't you want to see it, you know? Why don't you want to see it? It's there. I mean, if he is a risk, he is a risk to all children. I really don't get it. Most people would steer well away from this kind of individuals, but not the McCanns. Needless to say, after this holiday, Katerina and the Paines will only meet once more. And over the next years, the relationship between Katerina, Savio, Gaspar and the McCanns will become distanced only seeing each other at, at children's birthday parties. And now we need to move on to year 2007, okay? Katerina finds out from the TV, Madeline is missing. According to her, the first question she asks her husband is if David Payne was on the same holiday with the rest. Her husband didn't know, but she later found out when she saw him in the background in a footage shown on telly. You know, I've been asking myself the same question as I'm pretty sure you guys have asked as well. If Katerina believed Payne a pedophile, why did she allow her daughter around him? And why didn't she go to the police sooner after the Mallorca holiday, right? So, I was uh, trying to figure it out, really, and I'll try to explain it as best as I can in my own words. Whilst I don't put uh, blame on anyone or defending anyone, I think that Katrina thought that she might be overreacting. Yes, I know, you can't overreact when you hear something like this, but, but what if she doubted herself? Maybe she believed that she heard wrong. Or maybe when she saw the others not giving it any importance, she thought not is, nothing was wrong. So she became suspicious at one point and then she told her husband to be careful with their daughter around pain. But maybe she thought that she is exaggerating. Maybe she thought that this group of people, or in particular pain, is not that kind of person, you know. As you know, as um, 
as I really like to believe, you are somehow defined by the friends you have. And if you look at them, they are middle class doctors and professionals. It would never cross my mind someone like this could do something so bad. I think that Katrina was perhaps trying to ignore her, her instincts. I mean, come on, I'm pretty sure that you went through something like that at one point in your life. When you believe with all your heart something is not quite right, but then you second out yourself and you try to ignore that instinct. I mean, it's not a comparison by no means, but it's just, I think it's just human nature when you have second thoughts about something and it's like sort of you are trying to, I don't know, sabotage yourself, so to speak. But I think you get my, you get, you get the point. And I'll be completely honest with you. I was verbally, physically and sexually abused by my ex-husband and I, and I never once reported him to the police. I was ashamed and I was scared. So all those things actually stopped me from going any further. And also the fact that I knew being married to him, the police wouldn't do much because you can't really say you've been sexually abused by your husband, if you get what I mean. So in my opinion, these things, no matter how terrible they can be, sometimes people for various reasons decide not to go any further. But anyway, let's get back to it. Also, on the other side, we, we need to look at this as well. On the other side, this kind of accusation can destroy someone's life. So you have to be really, really careful when you try to make it. Pedophilia is something which will stain a person forever, if not guilty. So I'm not even surprised that she didn't do anything earlier. Plus, there's always the evidence side of it. If you don't have any evidence, there's very little chance that the police will do anything about it. And especially when you have a group of people and, and that group of people, they, they seem to think that the conversation is normal. And then out of, the, of that group of people who are friends with each other for years, you as a person who just got to know them and you to come up with an accusation like this, it's even worse because then the police might think, oh, you know what, but they were like nine people there and no one said anything about it and no one accused pain of anything like that. So. How can you, as a, as a person, only one person out of the whole group sitting at the table, accuse someone of something like that? How come you heard but no one else did? You know what I mean? It's something like that. Katerina's husband was also friend with Kate McCann. So I assume that she probably didn't want to ruin their relationship by accusing David of something, especially if she, if she would be wrong. But when Katerina heard on the news of Madeline's disappearance, her instinct kicked right in and she decided now is the time to come forward. So on the 16th of May 2007, Katerina Gaspar and her husband both make statements to Leicestershire police in which they express their concern over sexually suggestive gestures made by Payne whilst on holiday in Mallorca. These statements taken were not sent to the Portuguese police until the 24th of October 2007, 24 days after Gonzalo Amaral was removed from his position. I'm wondering why they were waiting for him to be removed. <laughs> Funny thing is, however, that on the 20th of May 2007, Jerry is flying back to the UK to meet Clarence Mitchell for the first time on a circumstantial meeting in the office of Leicestershire Police. And the plot thickens. So, four days after the Gaspar statement, Jerry meets with Clarence Mitchell and they meet at Leicestershire police station. Oh, oh, Clarence Mitchell, your very first time getting your hands dirty for the McCann's. It's not like you didn't get them dirty before, but this is the first time with the McCann's. 
I really do believe, in all honesty, the so-called meeting was orchestrated between them and the Leicestershire police. They had to come up with a plan to cover this pedophilia allegation because, you know, it wouldn't look good on the parents who are trying to look as innocent as possible. Also, it's no coincidence, in my opinion, that Gordon Brown visited the same police station just three days after the McCann's return to England. And this visit was under the pretext of a community neighborhood policing. There's no coincidence here, I don't think so. And you know why? Because, because Leicestershire police is influenced by Freemasons. Yeah, you know, Gordon Brown, Freemason, police officers at Leicestershire police are also Freemasons, and uh, Freemasons help each other in covering each other's crimes, Jerry and alleged Freemason as well. So yeah, you know, it all goes around and round and round in circles, and you know, the more you think about it and the more information you find, the, the more you are able to actually connect the dots and uh, try to figure out why and how it happened. Police Constable Phil Caswell is working for the Leicestershire Police since 2000 and he is a Freemason, but I'm pretty sure if you look in more detail, you will find many more members. <laughs> and now I want to take you back to Amaral's book and uh, let's do a bit of reading, okay? You know how I love this book, so yes, I quote that information, very important for the progress of the investigation, was never sent to the Portuguese police. When the Portuguese investigators learn about similar events that allegedly took place in Greece, without, however, obtaining reliable witness statements, they tell the English police, who even at this point refrain from revealing what they know on the subject. It will only be after my removal from the investigation in October 2007 that this statement will finally be sent to the Portuguese police. Why did the British keep it secret for more than six months? It is all the more surprising that David Payne, who planned the trip to Majorca, of whom it was known that his behavior toward the children was, to say the least, questionable, is the same person who organized the holiday in Portugal, that he is one of the closest to Madeline and that he is the first friend of the family to have been seen with Kate McCann just after the disappearance. He was still present in Villa da Luz when the English police received that witness statement. Why wasn't he interviewed immediately? I'll tell you one thing, I'll tell you one thing. The six months, why why didn't the police send that statement for six months? I think that those six months, they were very beneficial to them to come up with a plan and to try and uh, cover, cover, cover things up and, you know, to try to excuse this kind of witness statements, something like that. Anyway, six months is a very long time. Six months, you have plenty of time to come up with a, a great story and you also have plenty of time to make sure that the head of the investigation is dismissed. Yes. Even Amaral is surprised to know how come David was still allowed to organize and go on another holiday after Majorca. I think that anyone police officer or not, would question the same thing. It's so obvious, but you know what? It annoys me so bad when these things are actually allowed to happen. What really happened in Portugal with Madeline? What happened with her? The disturbing fact is that the pain allegation was never followed by the British police. Neither Jerry McCann nor David Payne were ever questioned about this severe allegation. See, <clears throat> especially David Payne's last interview on 11th of April 2008, where the British officer never hooked in when the crucial Majorca holiday came into discussion. The 2008 rogatory took place in Leicestershire on demand of the Portuguese police. But although the Portuguese police was attendant, they were not allowed to ask any questions by themselves. Then, 
Another thing, we also have David's statement about Madeline. His statement is really, really hard to understand. Uh, so, because, especially because it's so full of stammering. So I'll just, you know, cut out all the R and E and O and I don't know. And so it's easier to understand, yeah? And I want to uh, read it out to you now. Madeline's a very striking, beautiful child. I'd almost, if I want a better phrase, call her doll-like. She was very, I think, very unique looking child. She'd got very pretty, blonde hair, in a bob. She was quite a petite child and she was very bubbly. She was a very good child to interact with. She was very bright. You could have a lot of fun with Madeline. She was Kate and Jerry's pride and joy. They'd had a lot of trouble conceiving with IVF and everything and Madeline was their miracle. She was obviously very unique with the fact that she'd got the iris defect. She was certainly a happy-go-lucky child. She would interact with the other children very well. As I said on the other earlier recording, she played very happily with Lily and indeed the other children. She was very... She is a very beautiful child and good fun. I, a fact I've come across already, she was a... She is a very bright child. She wouldn't be the kind of mischievous child who and just try and get out of the flat and get up to mischief and that. There's fun in all children, but she certainly wasn't that kind of child. She was very bright. Okay, so like you know already, I've actually read the, the whole Amaral's book, as I keep mentioning. Um, there, are, there is one thing which I came across, and this is uh, regarding to the IVF treatment, and uh, it's uh, related to psychology. So Amaral in his book is mentioning that uh, he actually spoke to a psychologist about the IVF treatment and the family and uh, all these kind of things. And uh, the, that psychologist was saying that even though... They struggled for to get pregnant, to have children. They were successful in the IVF treatment. Kate fell pregnant. They were so happy. Madeline was a miracle. That is not the same thing like when you actually have a child. It's not the same thing. Sometimes people, they get overwhelmed by having children. Although you planned for so long and although you did everything possible to, go, to get pregnant and to have a child, when you actually hold that child, that baby it changes everything it changes your whole world it changes your whole life all of a sudden you are not the center of attention anymore and all of the sudden you are not free anymore you can't just go about have fun enjoy yourself with your friends and so on and so forth you have to be that parent to the child and be re and have a responsibility because that child life that child's life is in your hands literally in your hands so what the psychology said in the book made a lot of sense because it's, it's just not the same thing it's not the same thing so many people in this world they are they are desperate to have children they are desperately desperate to get pregnant they do get pregnant in the end and then they have the child and then all, all of a sudden they are not happy anymore and they don't want the child anymore after the child was born after they went through so much to actually fall pregnant and have children. They realize it's not all like, a, you know, like a movie. They like, it's not all a fantasy world, is it? It's not all pink and butterflies and flowers and whatever. Okay, let's get back to David Payne. I think that this individual knows what happened to Madeline. And notice how he keeps referring to her in the past tense. She was, but then he realizes and he rephrases, she is a very beautiful child. And this is precisely how you talk about someone who passed away. Not about someone who's been abducted, no. And not about someone you think they might have passed away, but about a person you know for sure that they passed away about a person where you actually have the confirmation that they are not alive anymore and these words they are spoken out of habit i'm not talking about dave i'm talking about david i'm talking in general these kind of words they are spoken out of habit whereas 
There is no way in hell you would refer to someone alive in the past tense. No. And and they all do it. All the members of the group do it. And I think that this is the habit of it. It's the habit. You know how they say that you are your worst critic? Well, I say that their brains or whatever gives us the perception of habit are working against them big time, big time. It's like a reflex, really. That's why I have to go back to the lying thing I keep mentioning. And, I, and I'm pretty sure, if I remember well, I, I'm mentioning this lie thing in every, of my, every single one of my videos. Again, the habit of referring to someone in the past tense when they are dead. They realize how they say it and what it means and then they correct themselves to make sure that they are getting the point across without incriminating themselves or without giving the indication that Madeline died. Quite honestly, I'm so so fed up of all their lies and scams and tricks and everything, everything and it's a fraud and it's a cover up and it's everything in my opinion. But moving on. So, if Jerry took part in that conversation with Payne about his own daughter, then is he a pedophile as well? Well, in my opinion, if you are right in your head and as a father to a daughter, you hear your friend talking in such a way, I don't know what would happen. You better ask my husband, but you definitely not be able to get off that chair anymore. Seriously. No, it's unacceptable. A father to hear those words from his friend about his own child. No. It's unacceptable. This is crazy. I mean, in what world is it okay? In what world is it okay? And in what world do we actually turn a blind eye to the obvious? And why? Because He's Jerry McCann? I mean, who is Jerry McCann anyway? Who is David Payne? Are they gods and we don't know about it? Are we also meant to worship them? Seriously? I'm great. I'm getting really worked up here, guys. But, but, okay. Okay. But, hold on. Did you know that Brian Kennedy, the business tycoon and their benefactor, has a villa in Majorca? Sadly, I couldn't track the villa, but if this is true, that means that they knew each other before Madeline's disappearance. Some really strange things happening. Then, we also have Clement Freud with a villa in Portugal linked to pedophilia, whom the McCann's visited right after Madeline's disappearance. And then the, uh, there was, there is, oh, there's also one last thing which uh, I forgot to mention about uh, David Payne. Yvonne Warren Martin, a social worker from England, recognized Payne in Portugal whilst she was on holiday in Lagos at the same time of Madeline's disappearance. She recognized him from a situation that she previously investigated which was related to child neglect or sexual abuse. And before I end this video, there is one last point which I really want to touch and that is Jerry's cat's record. WPC software company sells the CAT system to UK police forces and the government. The CAT software, which is uh, actually case administration and tracking system, consists of three modules, child protection, domestic abuse and vulnerable adult. The CAT system was developed in the absence of a national database for child protection and in light of the recommendation in Lord Lamming's report into the death of Victoria Climby, that chief constables must ensure that their police force has in use an effective child protection database and IT management system. CATS gives a much clearer picture of the child or vulnerable person referred to them. The data collected in CATS can be used to piece together vital information on family background of that individual, helping the user make more informed decisions. CATS may also be used to help identify previous accusations against suspects offering further lines of investigation and valuable information to help assess the safety of the vulnerable person. 
incidents go through a managed process from a new referral to a finalized incident. As the case is progressed, CATS validates the information collected and ensures the case has visibility to the relevant officers and staff members. Incident reports can be generated for sharing of information between police and social services. A full audit trail is available in CATS which enables supervisors to monitor usage of the system. Customers who use CAT include Leicestershire Police, among other, uh, poli among other forces. This topic is not new, but it doesn't mean it can't be important. There was a claim by a Twitter user which reads, Jerry McCann was convicted for child sex abuses in 2002, although the evidence has been hacked and emptied from the case file by someone who has access to the National Sex Offenders Register, namely Jim Gamble through the COP mainframe connected to the every police station crime files in the UK. The reference for this conviction still exists in the judicial reference files and confirms that Jared McCann was placed on the Child Sex Offenders Register following conviction on co in court and is still on that register today. This is confirmed by an information issued in 2008 by the Leicestershire Police. Dear Sirs, in response to your letter of request, I can provide the following information regarding the above mentioned subject, Jerry McCann, born on June the 5th, 1968 in Scotland. Okay, so we are getting to the interesting part. A search of the local section of the child abuse shows the registration number 19309 in the CAT system. A consultation with the DC sound from the department in question confirms that this is just a file reference, but as a complement to operation task system for the purpose of reference, if an investigation should be necessary by the department, no work has been done on the basis of this file. An examination of all other police files using a search system does not reveal any information about him. And uh, there's here uh, as well submitted for your information. But, oh, always a but. The phrase, but as a complement to operation task system for the purpose of reference, if any investigation should be necessary by the department, to me it doesn't sound quite right, does it? If we believe that this is true, then, one, if he is not believed to be an offender, it would be mean that everyone in the UK actually has a CATS pedophile registration file, which is nonsense really. Or it, it can mean Jerry McCann indeed is registered just as the record already shows and he is still under police suspicion to do more offenses against children. Or there could also be the possibility that the CATS record stems from the 16th of May 2007 itself. As a matter of fact, the case was filed as national security through political interference by Downing Street number 10. So a matter of national security. What can be such a matter of national security to not allow these allegations or this information to be added to his file or not to stay in his file to say more precisely because in my opinion at one point the information was there but it was you know like he grew wings and flew away so neither Jerry nor David were ever questioned about these allegations that Katrina mentions in her witness statement I am really inclined to believe that Jerry McCann has a record which got cleaned just like so many other things in this case I don't I don't think it's a coincidence and honestly I'm not even surprised but I still am wondering why was the case filed as national security I mean you try to request some information and they hit you back with national security 
So again, it leads me to believe that the government was involved here as well, which leads me to believe there's much more going on here. There's no other explanation for this massive cover-up. Okay, we got to the end of my video. Many thanks for watching again. If you are not subscribed, please don't forget to hit that red big subscribe button below. Also make sure you hit the notification bell so you are the first one to know when my new video will be up. And this is gonna be a really interesting one. My next video is about Jerry McCann and the government Quango Komar in 2007. It's a really interesting one with nuclear power plants and levels of radiations and Jerry McCann was part of the commission for radiations levels. So we will try and find out if there is a connection, if it's got anything to do with Madeline's case and cover up. Okay, that's all from me for today. Many thanks for watching again. Take care and stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.